Good morning, everyone. We welcome you to our Sunday morning roundtable discussion with the subject today of soul and body. We are recording from the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent in Plainfield, New Jersey, the United States of America. And we're so glad you all could join us this morning. We'll start with our morning prayer. I'm reading this morning from Miscellaneous Writings, page 110, and an excerpt from the platform, page 336 of Science and Health. Beloved children, the world has need of you, and more as children than as men and women. It needs your innocence, unselfishness, faithful affection, uncontaminated lives. You need also to watch and pray that you preserve these virtues unstained and lose them not through contact with the world. What grander ambition is there than to maintain in yourself what Jesus loved and to know that your example, more than words, makes morals for mankind. The spiritual man's consciousness and individuality are reflections of God. They are the emanations of him who is life, truth, and love. Immortal man is not and never was material, but always spiritual and eternal. Mary Baker Eddy. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Karen. Okay. Watch number 170. <clears throat> Watch lest you fear the discordant and unpleasant phases of human experience more than those which, because they tend to put one to sleep, would rob one of his ability to meet and overcome the so-called domination of mortal belief or mesmerism. Whatever stirs thought to greater spiritual activity is preferable to the soothing and activity-destroying effect of human harmony, which tends to put one to sleep and rob him of his determination to overcome the domination of mortal belief. If you were learning to ride horseback and were given a bucking, bucking bronco to learn on, a <laughs> horse determined to unseat its rider, when you could ride him, your ability as a rider would be unquestioned. Perhaps in his wisdom, God is training us to maintain our spiritual hold on him by giving us the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, as we read in Isaiah 30, 20, so that we may finally be able to say, quote, none of these things move me, end quote. It is not difficult to perceive that one receives very little training in spiritual stick to through human harmony. Jesus declared, quote, and fear not them, which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, man's spiritually active sense, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell, put man to sleep in his duty to God, when to keep awake spiritually is the paramount need. End quote. Real progress starts in human harmony and not in discord. Yet, since it is materiality that is the enemy of God, it is necessary in progress to begin to resist the belief in the seemingly natural and harmonious phases of mortal existence with determination. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Comments with that? Hmm. Well, that sentence really stood out to me. When I chose this watch, real progress starts in human harmony and not in discord. <laughs> wow, where did, well, I've never read that before. Even, I mean, I know human harmony, we've talked about it many times. That's not, but I don't know the way he put it right there. It's just, but it's true. We just seem to feel, and I was, like I said, when I was on the island, everything was humanly harmonious. Um, 
but I knew something was missing. So, um, yeah, that's very, very important. To know. Thank, thank you. Yes. Yeah, and I, I'd never read it before, except in Carpenter's writings, um, Spiritual Footsteps. And he brings out how Mrs. Eddy would go after the students when everything was harmonious. <laughs> uh, yeah. in harmony if they weren't awake and working. And so, yes, when things seem to be going well is sometimes the time you can be going down the shoot to shoots if you're yeah. not. Careful. Yes. Yeah, I was also thinking these unpleasant phases of um, human experience. It it doesn't really matter, I think, what the level of degree is. If it's something very frightening with a medical issue, or if you stub your toe, um, or have a dispute with your neighbor, it's all mortal mind just trying to claim a man. It's not. I that that was just a wonderful watch, and I just. I just I really worked with that a lot this week, and it was wonderful to to think about it like that. That n none of these claims need frighten us be because they're all the same thing. Thank thank you very much. That's very comforting to people who think they have some frightening thing they're dealing with. It's all it's all the Adam dream. It's all the same. It doesn't matter what it calls itself. Thank you. The hold on to God, help us hold on to God. Uh, that stood out to me. That that. Well, and when these experiences come to us, they come to us because we're ready for them, and we they come to us for us to learn to overcome them, and to gain the confidence in God that they can be overcome. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like going to school. You learn. You know, and then you have a test. And if you could pass the test, it shows that you know right. the subject. Well, these are just tests. Life is a schoolhouse, right? Right. <laughs> sure. You can ride a fucking Bronco. <laughs> yeah. And if we and if we accept the tests rather than run away from them, we will pass the tests, we will grow. But the nature of human nature is to run from the tough situations, right? Yeah. And to seek the, quote, human harmony, right? I mean, you see it advertised all over the place. You know, retire to such and such a place and life will be beautiful. Well, <laughs> that's a trap. I think often when it seems, when it seems worse, it seems so real to us. I think that's when we want to run away from it. It's amazing. I was reading an article, uh, somebody with a, a vision problem. She realized that it's her consciousness that sees. But then when she got really terrible, what's really worse, she was laughing. <laughs> she laughed at it. Mm -hmm. And that's when the healing came. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Wonderful. Yeah, to laugh at it is wonderful. And, you know, it's in the lesson. There's so much in the lesson. It heals just about everything. But knowing that soul and its attributes were forever manifested through man, the master healed the sick, gave sight to the blind. Just one statement like that, if you really take that to heart, if you're having vision problems, it can heal you. You don't need to go on and on and on looking for things necessarily. Just one powerful statement of truth that you really take in, imbibe. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Well, I also, about I, just what came to me just now was this article by Kratzer that we've talked about. But when he talks about, um, when we say that was a good meal or that was a good sleep or that, he says good matter. Mm -hmm. You know, he reminds us that we can't just keep it there. We can't be, gosh, that was, we we have to take it out of the matter. And, and that's not always, you know, they'll say grace and, and everything, but we have to take all these comforts, sleep, eating, even though it seems to be very harmonious, we have to take it out of matter 
and that's what we sometimes <laughs> I, I won't say don't often make sure that what my thought isn't saying that or when we're dressing ourselves, you know, what that all but it's not matter that we're dealing with. And that's when we have to make be very vigilant in making sure I for me, making sure that I'm not leaving it in matter, but I'm re, I'm uh, lifting it out of matter into spirit. Yeah, translating it back to God and God's provision for us, and um, yeah. and that in the lesson too, quite clearly uh, about how how he um, we're sustained by God. He, he spirit duly feeds and clothes every object as it appears in the line of spiritual creation. If we keep taking it back to God, then that is, then that makes it real reality. If we just leave it in matter and more matter and, and wallowing in matter, then we're in trouble. Shardell, did you, want to, oh. did you want to say something? Oh, no, I was writing everything back to God. I even, I was with family this weekend. I was thinking about that. That took it all back to God. Bless them. Derry? I yeah, I wanted to say something. I'm really grateful for hearing this because uh, I had the greatest unfoldment of the nicest people coming to uh, help me move things from a storage into the attic. And people did show up. And I said, God t takes me all the way. And, you know, this prayer is just as natural as, as drawing it's just the you know opening up to the relationship with god the friendship with god and this is what we have to um have a stronger um sense of otherwise it becomes this finest element that would throw it off so i want to hold to this thank you that's true the swinish element that would throw it off thank you uh, that puts it all back into mortal thinking the greed the gluttony whatever it's jealousy it puts it back into the Adam dream and you get you you get out of the father's house. Keep it where it belongs. Lauren? No, I mean when when I used to be so afraid, <laughs> when it got really worse and I said, Oh my God, what now? What can I do? What else? You know? But I think as in those moments, it really makes you completely rely on God and, and leave the lie behind i i am remembering how one day i just was it, it was enough i just couldn't carry on anymore but i think at that moment though i just surrendered to god and that helped me that Thank saved me you should say yeah that's perfect because that's the whole point of it isn't it is to surrender everything to God. Mrs. Eddy said somewhere that, you know, these experiences are salutary if they wrench away the material, you know, the belief material. and relying on the material. I'll be grateful that you get challenges all the time that that just keeps you moving forward. It does. Instead of just stopping and oh, relaxing, you know, and everything starts building up. All right. Yeah, and that surrendering to God is, is so important. I don't know how many times that's been the turning point for me where I'm saying, Father, I, I'm, I have no idea what to do. I am one mess and you're just going to have to help me. And that has been a turning point when you just put it all on him. And it is him. He's, he's the one who cares for us. So I'll thank you all. Um, and I think this morning, Shardell, we'll start with you. This is from Deuteronomy in our lesson. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And I found this the great heart of infinite love, which probably a lot of you know by Louise Hartford Brown. And this is a quote from her. In a poem entitled, Signs of the Heart, Mary Baker Eddy writes in the second stanza of her poem, O oh, love divine, this heart of thine is all I need to comfort mine. Quote. Today as yesterday, 
this great heart of love is expressed in the living, palpitating presence of the healing Christ, revealing the divine nature of God to men. It is restoring the sick, reforming the sinner, and raising the dead through the gentle ministry of Christian science. As thought becomes spiritualized, this great heart will be understood to be inseparable from the life-giving, animating, creative principle, God-giving individuality and being to man. Without the governing, controlling power of this great heart, man could not exist for a moment. Since man's coexistence with God is eternal, nothing can sever this divine relationship. In reality, man cannot be dispirited, discouraged, or disheartened. For God has said in Ezekiel, I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. Thank you. That's beautiful. Um, you know, that little poem, that prayer, O love divine, this heart of thine, is all I need to comfort mine. I mean, that in itself is a treatment for people who think they have any kind of heart issues. Um, the, the infinite heart of love. We sing that in one of our songs, the little choir group we have upstairs. All you have to do is think on those things. It will heal anything. Um, and, and also to know that your heart beats for God. Your heart beats for God. There can't be any problems. And, and it starts out with, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, all thy soul, all thy might. So are there areas where you don't love God with all your heart? If you give it all to him, your heart will just be fine. Um, it couldn't be otherwise. And in Science and Health, 425, correct material belief by spiritual understanding, and spirit will form you anew. You will never fear again except to offend God. And you will never believe that heart or any portion of the body can destroy you. So what what belief what what do you think is 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 destroying you your livers your lungs your heart <laughs> what is it what is it is it bigger than God it can't this is that it is our own finger against ourselves or something to that effect yeah it, it, it is and if you get into this truth and stay in this truth. It's impossible. And I love that. You will never believe that heart or any portion of the body can destroy you, except to offend God. And none of us want to offend God, do we? So mm -hmm. I don't think it has this power. If we're knowing God is all power, then how can this other stuff have power? It can't. It, it, you have your eyes, your lungs, your liver, everything else, only because God exists, your heart, and they work because God is your life. Don't get it the other way around that, you know, that that's your life. And then you look up to God occasionally for a few things. <laughs> when, when we're at our extremity. Yeah, when you're at your extremity, yes. <laughs> so... And just stay. And when you stay in that sense of his allness, then you, you, you end up, you don't even have any of these problems. It's, it's preventative as well as curative. But stay there and, and, and know this truth all the time because it is the truth. I mean, why study and do all this if you don't think it's the truth? You believe it or not. And if you do, it's amazing. It's so wonderful. Yeah. It is so amazing. And when you get to that point where you see it work, you know, where you see God in action so many times and these other things just fade away, then you do get to the point where you can laugh at them when they come along and you do rejoice in tribulation. Yes. Yes, I know. And I mean, sometimes 
and, and this is not meant disrespectfully, but sometimes you will hear a person tell you all these things that are going wrong. And actually, it's, it does sound like some kind of a comedy movie, you know, where everybody's <laughs> tripping and falling <laughs> and sick and this and that. And it, it's good to laugh at it. It's better to laugh at it than, to, oh, my gosh, this is so horrible. <laughs> I mean, which is better to laugh at it or say, oh, my gosh, this is so horrible. Laugh at it. As we say here, it, it, Aaron doesn't like to be laughed at. It's ridiculous. That it's, can't be true. It's the one thing the devil can't stand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're saying, I don't believe you. You're ridiculous. This, this can't be right. Yep. <laughs> when a person does see the truth. They'll laugh at it too. They'll laugh at it too. Yeah. Go ahead, Mark. Did you want to? No, no. I was just laughing because I know sometimes it's not that easy, though. But if you've been learning throughout that God is all, right, and then you you're knowing it. I mean, you're really living it. Then it becomes laughable at times. It's like, what, what's this? You know, where where are you going or something? <laughs> right. Where did this come from? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and, and a healthy sense of humor, you know, Mrs. Eddy says, keep your grin ahead of your groan. And she did have a good sense of humor. We know that. So it's not, it's not wrong. It's not disrespectful. I mean, you have to be careful, of course. You don't want to hurt anyone. But, um, but it, it truly is. It, it's mortal mind is laughable. And to go back to uh, what Elizabeth was saying, to see God at work every day in everything that you're doing is a perfect safety because that state of mind is being at one with God. Yes, thank you. That's demonstrating your oneness. Yeah, coexistence with God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. right. And if there's any part of your life where you think you're doing it, you know, <laughs> well, then you've lost that connection and you're in trouble. Yeah. So, OK, um, Nancy. Yes, good morning. Wonderful roundtable. Um, Psalm 107. He satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. I looked up uh, to satisfy, to supply fully what is necessary, or to feed to the full. And longing is earnestly desiring. Fill, to supply with abundance, to complete. And hungry, to desire with great eagerness, or to long for. And I found a, a Bible commentary. In the journey of life, spiritual hunger and thirst deeply resonate with our souls. The biblical text emphasizes that God provides for those who earnestly seek him, fulfilling their innate longings. This verse highlights the fundamental truth that God actively satisfies the desires of the weary soul, promising not only physical sustenance, but also spiritual nourishment. In context of both personal struggle and collective distress, we see a divine pattern of intervention where God not only identifies with our plight, but also brings a relief. The psalmist notes that every longing soul finds satisfaction in divine goodness, which illustrates God's overarching care for humanity, especially during times of trial. The significance of waiting upon the Lord emerges here. For those who thirst spiritually will find their needs met through him. This reflects the broader bib biblical themes of grace and redemption, echoing the call to gratitude for God's provision. Thus, he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness, serves as a powerful reminder to acknowledge and to celebrate God's steadfast love and provision in our lives. And I love that because we have to be so grateful for everything. And he will satisfy our longing souls for Thank sure. You. Yes. 
Yes, indeed. Thank you. And that longing for him. I, I think I've told you, but it was years ago where I listened to it. It was a Charles Stanley sermon, but he, he made it really clear. You've got to want God more than anything else. And that was kind of almost shocking to me. I mean, I thought I did, but not the way he was saying it more than anything else and more than you want your marriage to be fixed or you want this disease to be fixed or you want this house down the street. You got to want it. You want, you want him for his sake, not for the added bonuses that you think he'll give you, but just because you want God, you want that peace and that joy and the health and all good. Yes, he does provide by seeking him with your whole heart. Well, that was a wake up call for me. And I, I changed my ways. It was a really good sermon. I'll never forget that. I'm always grateful to him for that. I never heard it put quite like that. And I, I'm sure it's in, it's all over science and health. It's all over everything. But sometimes it's just a certain way a person says it at a certain time that will resonate with you. And that did with me too. So you can ask yourself, are you really seeking God? just for him, for his sake, or just because you want the bonuses or because maybe you think you should or whatever, but for his sake alone, big changes will happen when you sincerely do that. And it won't be overnight. You've got, you've got to prove yourself, but seek him with your whole, it, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say it's about, wanting to know why are we here and what is all this you know and and that's where it comes in that you just you know you you learn about god and you just are in amazement of his power and his grace and and everything else and that's that you know if you can just keep that in in mind then you don't then you know that the rest is going to be added to you but it's not even important anymore in a way no, it's so true. It's not even important. And even when it all comes, it's not important. All that right. matters is, is your connection, that feeling of oneness. That's all that matters. If you lose that, you've lost everything. Yeah. It, well, it, no, go ahead. Well, it says that's the El Dorado of Christianity. Thank you. Beautiful God. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. we realize that it didn't start in this seeming world and it won't end here either and that we go on forever and ever, why would there be anything more important than that? Mm -hmm. Exactly. There isn't. And yet we look in all different directions and, and here God is with answer. I mean, this lesson brings it out. Identity is in soul. Supply is in soul. Beauty is in soul. Um, you know, your food, your clothing, um, everything, your sight, your eyesight, everything. It's in God. So, Anne, our dear Anne in England. Hello, Anne, if you're listening. <laughs> anyway, she sent um, something about the loaves and the fishes which is in the lesson this week. And it was interesting. It, it's from the Berean Study Bible, according to, to the Bible Hub website. And it goes into different parts of it. The first, they all ate. This phrase mm -hmm. signifies the inclus inclusivity and completeness of the miracle. Historically, meals were significant social events in Jewish culture, often symbolizing fellowship and community. The act of eating together underlines the unity and provision of God for his people. You know, it's always good to get out and eat with people, dine with people, have not be looking at your tablets all the time. Get out with people and spend time talking. This is something that Mrs. Evans taught me. She loved to get out. She got out every day for lunch. She needed to get out, see the world, be with people, have a nice conversation. We need to love the brethren, right? Love each other. How can you love God if you don't love each other? And then, and we're satisfied. The Greek word is used here meaning to be filled or satisfied. This term is often associated with a deep 
fulfilling satisfaction that goes beyond mere physical hunger. In a spiritual sense, it reflects the sufficiency of Christ to meet all your needs, both physical and spiritual. And then, and the disciples picked up. The act of the disciples gathering the leftovers is significant. The Greek word means to gather together or collect. This action demonstrates the importance of stewardship and the careful management of God's blessings. Hmm. It also serves as a practical lesson for the disciples, teaching them about the abundance of God's provision and the responsibility to preserve and respect what is given. This is huge. You know, again, the first time I went out with Mrs. Evans, I had a big lesson because <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't finish my meal and I couldn't believe it. Here we are out to lunch or dinner. I don't know what it was, but she, she said, well, first of all, you don't order anything that you can't eat. You're going to order it. You eat it. <laughs> I said, oh, my goodness. And and then not only wasn't I going to eat it, I, was, I wasn't going to pack it up and take it home with me. I was just going to leave it. I mean, how did that happen? I, I didn't have any. Uh, I was so ungrateful. And at the time, I, I felt so embarrassed. And I felt, oh, how could you say that to me? Well, she was right. You don't waste, in other words. You do not waste what God gives you. If you don't waste, you will have more. If you waste, you won't. And there are many ways to waste, not to take care of what you have, not to keep it clean, not to um, respect and value what God gives you is a form of wasting it. And then pretty soon it doesn't work or it breaks down. And the worst form of waste is to waste <clears throat> time hmm. doing things foolishly or, or frivolously or do it and not doing what the tasks that God has for you to do. Yes. Because you can't ever get that time back. back. Yeah. Thank you. And Mrs. Eddy, you know, her short article, Improve Your Time, she addresses that, doesn't she? And she mm -hmm. talks about lingering conversations or gossiping. All those are awful things, um, that how we can waste time. We must value what we have. You know, when I first met Gary, he hardly had anything, he hardly had any clothes. The clothes that he had, his mother made, <laughs> except for his pants, but all his shirts and everything. I mean, he just had a few shirts. He didn't even have a winter jacket and he was up in Boston. So he lived very frugally and he still does to this day. I learned many lessons from that. Um, we don't, need a lot <laughs> and what we do have whether we have a lot or not we must be very very grateful for and and uh not waste and if you can't eat your lunch or dinner when you're out you do take it home and you eat it later you do not leave crusts you do not leave all this stuff and if you can't eat it you shouldn't order it order something you can eat these are just rules and principles of the universe so what you leave will be thrown away. It will be just worth yes. it. Mm -hmm. This is why, go back to the synonyms for God. What is it that you love? If you love principle, you're not going to waste anything, right? Right. I truly, I've, I've had to learn this, and I'm still learning it. I think living in America, where there did seem to be such an abundance of stuff, and you know, I, I, I didn't I didn't know this lesson really the way I should. Um, it's very important. We have an, a very abundant God, but we must be so grateful for all that he's given us. I've, I've learned many things. Go ahead. No, it's just taking things for granted. You know, it's not no respect for it or anything. So you don't yeah. cherish it. No. Yeah. And then you lose it for a few days um, and my gosh, and <laughs> yeah, we had an experience where our pump wasn't working well. I thought maybe because of the drought, we were <laughs> didn't have enough water or something. But anyway, two angels came and fix, fixed it for us on a snowy day. We had snow in Bernardsville, but anyway, and, and they were angels. 
because someone said, well, they couldn't fix it till after Thanksgiving. I thought, well, I'm going to have to cancel Thanksgiving because we don't have water. <laughs> but, but it was fixed. But my gratitude for water and water pressure was overwhelming. I mean, we take this for granted. You turn the faucet on and water comes. Well, we must be grateful and not waste it. And right. I have to say my Russian daughter-in-law, who came from a country where there wasn't a lot, I've learned so much from her in her respect for everything. Uh, she doesn't waste, she's very, she tries never to use plastics or things that are not biodegradable and recycling, all these things we must, and maybe I'm preaching to the choir, hopefully you all know this, but I have, I have had to learn it. So anyway, then we go on, 12 basketfuls. The number 12 is symbolically significant in the Bible, often representing completeness of, or the people of God as seen in the 12 tribes of Israel. The collection of 12 baskets signifies the overflowing abundance of God's provision, ensuring that nothing is wasted and that there is more than enough for all of God's people. And you see, when you don't waste, there is. My daughter has a friend from India who she she does this charity work and collects things. And my goodness, too, if you you do not waste in her presence, nothing gets wasted because she knows what it's like not to have food or to know people that do not have enough food or enough clothing. If we do not waste and we give of our hearts rich overflow of what we do have, everyone should have enough. Yes. Everyone. Yeah. You know. Easily. And then of broken pieces refers to the fragment of pieces. In a spiritual context, it can symbolize how God can use what seems broken or insignificant to fulfill his purposes. The broken pieces are a re reminder of the miracle's magnitude and the meticulous care of Jesus in ensuing that every part of the blessing is gathered and valued. And then that were left over. This emphasizes the super abundance of God's provision. God's ability to pro provide beyond immediate needs, offering a surplus. And what do you do with that surplus? Build a huge, 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 huge. No, I don't think so. The surplus that can be shared and used for future needs and to bless others with. This is how we demonstrate abundance. And, and it is because our God is abundant. We know that. Remember that prayer, you know, the woman that was praying for a Volkswagen and then the man practitioner oh, yeah. said, it's too bad you asked for a Volkswagen. God would, give, <laughs> would have given you. So <laughs> we have an abundant God. And as you live this, you will find the abundance. Certainly all your needs should be met. And then another in an article that dear Carrie sent, said how Jesus, instead of looking at all the, the small quantity of food <laughs> and all the people that had to be fed, he looked up to heaven. So here we are. Do we look up to heaven? Are you looking at your problem? Are you focused on your problem? Do you think about it all the time? Are you poking it? Are you talking about it or thinking about it constantly? Then you're not looking up to heaven. You're not looking to the source of supply. And you're mesmerized. You are mesmerized up to your eyeballs by what you think you see. You're certainly not using your spiritual sense. Jesus beheld in science the perfect man who appeared to him where sinning mortals appeared to mortals. In this perfect man, our Savior saw God's own likeness, and this correct view of man healed the sick. I don't think that's an exact quote, but anyway, the point being, what are you looking at in others and in yourself? The correct view of man, you will see God's own likeness in yourself and in others. God's own likeness. Wow. There's nothing sick there. There's nothing lacking there. There's nothing sad there. It's God's own likeness. 
And if you're feeling sad and miserable, that's because you're not doing this. In that one sentence, Mrs. Eddy tells you how to give a perfect treatment. See the perfect man. Perfect man. See that perfect man. And do it consistently. Go ahead. Sorry. I love where it says who appeared to him. Yes. He didn't see anything else. That's yes. all he could see. Yes. I love that. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, where everyone else saw a sinning, miserable mortal, which we're all looking at if we're not careful. I think of that a lot while we're watching The Chosen. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yeah, and with such great compassion, he saw, saw beyond the problem. You must see it beyond your own problems. Now, this, this is this. And I, just to go back to this point, this is seeing God at work, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And this should be our objective is to see God at work every day, 24 hours a day. And if we and if we can achieve that, boy, just think of what we could how much good we could do for the world. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, this is another, this article from, sent from Carrie, and I think I'm going to have to read most of it because it is so good and so apropos to now. Um, and it's by William McCracken, and it's called Labor Not for the Meat, Which Perisheth. The labor problem is the problem of understanding substance. As long as substance is conceived of as matter, so long will material means, physical force, and war seem necessary for the acquisition of substance, and discord and decay brand such efforts as worse than fruitless. When the teaching of Christian science is applied that substance is spiritual, when it will be seen that substance must be sought in spirit and in truth, all must learn this lesson in order that men and women may become workers together with him and love's labor be not lost. The laborer needs to know that his riches lie in God and not in his employer. The tendency to divide human beings into rich and poor, laborers and capitalists, proceeds from materialistic reasoning. There is no dividing line between God's children, and there will be none between mortals when the yardstick of matter ceases to be used as a measure. Viewed from the standpoint of spiritual attainment, what can mere matter declare concerning man? All need healing, forgiveness, security, salvation, and substance and spirit alone can supply these needs. Therefore, all are on a basis of equality before God. The man of much money has no security for his riches except in God. Without divine protection, no investments are worth the paper they are written on. The word of an honest man and the steel walls of a bank safe are no protection against loss and poverty unless these riches are turned over to God to keep. Belgium and France illustrate how riches can be lost in a night. This was written in 1919. Jesus once said to the crowd which follows him, followed him, labor not for the meat which perish, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man gives unto you for him hath God the father sealed and that's part of our golden text true labor concerns itself with a spiritual meat which is invisible physical labor has its right place but it should be an effect of spiritual activity and so understood would always be highly productive in an address read before the world's parliament of religions held in Chicago in 1893 Mrs. Eddy had the following to say. To the sore question, what are the working men's rights? Science answers, justice and mercy, where in the financial, civil, social, moral, and religious aspect of all questions reflect the face of the Father. And this question will not rest till both employer and employee are actuated by the spirit of this saying, 
of the meek and mighty Son of God. Quote, Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do unto you, do ye even so to them. The golden rule cannot be understood or obeyed from a material basis. The face of the Father is not matter but spirit. Therefore, men and women of all types of character and degree of wealth or poverty can unite in spirit and there find their inexhaustible riches. Matter involves limitation. If substance is believed to be material, then much substance for one individual must mean less substance for another. And the process could be carried forward until all substance would be in the hands of a few. But when substance is recognized as spirit, substance can neither be lessened nor monopolized, and the gain of one not detract from the gain of all. When man learns of the abundance of God, there will not be any strife or strike over who shall have or who shall have not, as supply will not be a fearful or selfish consideration, since the Father will be recognized as the source of all good. The abundance of air and sunshine is never limited. Herein, lies a lesson for rich and poor. True brotherhood can be expressed by overcoming selfishness, envy, greed, and revenge. Under the date of January 6, 1895, a Boston newspaper reported of Mrs. Eddy's manner of life at Pleasant View, Concord, New Hampshire. Quote, she employs a number of men to keep the grounds and farm in perfect order, and it was pleasing to learn that this rich woman is using her money to promote the welfare of industrious workmen in whom she takes a vital interest. Mrs. Eddy believes that the laborer is worthy of his hire and moreover that he deserves to have a home and family of his own. Indeed, one of her motives in buying so large an estate was that she might do something for toilers and thus her add her influence toward the advancement of better home life and citizenship. That's in pulpit and press. She who toiled for others as no one else has done, loved the toilers everywhere and taught multitudes to obey the command. Labor not for the meat which perish, perisheth. Her teaching at this hour is paramount to solve the labor problem on a basis of impartiality, which is a divine quality of the heavenly father, mother, God. So, there you have it. <laughs> there you have it. And if each of us individually look to spirit instead of matter for our source of supply, we will be abundantly satisfied. And that'll get rid of greed. It'll get rid of envy. And what is the last and final commandment of the Ten Commandments? Yeah. It will get more covered. It will satisfy the last commandment. Lawrence loves this is Gary's favorite book. <laughs> oh my. Well, no, really. really. I mean, this is why Christian science is the only answer to every problem that the world is facing. Well, that's you know, true. You know, I mean, really. I mean, we are all together in this. So let's not let false human beliefs separate us or try to divide us. Yeah. That's such nonsense. And what does Mrs. Lee say? The rich, the rich in spirit, spirit help the poor in one Yeah. And, and that's how it should be. And, and that's how it is in most cases, quite frankly. Yeah. I mean, and where it's not, we have to put God's blessing and know that will change. And this truth will change, and all of this greed and selfishness and things that divide us will. And envy. And envy. And <laughs> yeah, all, all of this. Revenge that's, was on that list. Revenge too. was on that list, yes. And Martha Wilcox in her article, War, and I've quoted this a lot because I love it, um, where people are obsessed with the belief that there are, are limits to the benefits of national expansion and that no price is too great to pay for it. But in Christian science, we understand that God made man and gave him presence and certainty and position. And man does not desire to get from somebody or, for some, or from some other nation 
but draws from infinity. Because God loves all the nations and he gave every nation an abundance of things. And when we steal from other nations or we do things that, that are wrong, according to the Ten Commandments, there are penalties. And so all of this must be righted and only Christian science can do it. So we are going to end on something um, beautiful, yes, um, about uh, most of you know, and we have one up in our foyer in a frame, Mrs. Eddy's um, souvenir spoon. And the souvenir spoon manufactured in recognition of Concord's most distinguished citizen, Mrs. Eddy carried this message from her to her followers. Matter, not matter but mine satisfieth. That's written on the spoon. It was her request that these spoons be used every day and the motto be noted at each meal. It found an immediate response in many homes. So think about that. Every meal to know not matter, but mine satisfieth. And so Gary's gonna conclude with a little something about this. Is an this is an article in the December 1898 issue of uh, I guess the Sentinel, entitled the, the Mary Baker Eddy Souvenir Spoon. And the article reads, it is our privilege to publish the following letter written to the Reverend Mary Baker Eddy by the Christian Science Souvenir Company of Concord, New Hampshire, together with a description of the beautiful souvenir spoon therein referred to. This souvenir will be valued by Christian scientists, not so much because of its artistic appearance, or intrinsic material value, but because of that for which it stands in the spiritual sense. Silver is one of the biblical symbols for purity. Purity and truth are synonymous. Therefore, this symbol of purity is also a symbol of truth. To Christian scientists, it means that truth which is revealed to it means that truth which is revealed to the world through science and health with key to the scriptures, of which the Reverend Mary Baker Eddy is the author. Christian scientists know that back of each souvenir is the thought of love, love for Christian scientists, love for all mankind, regardless of person or condition. In this spirit are the souvenirs sent forth. And in this spirit will they be received. It is truly a beautiful Christmas token. May it keep us in renewed remembrance of the true Christmas. May we celebrate it on an ascending scale. May we take on higher and deeper appreciation in our lives of the teaching and example of Christ Jesus whose coming into the world was heralded by that wondrous conjunction of earth and heaven, so graphically portrayed in Luke 2. May all who bear the name of Christ in this age re-echo the glad refrain of the angelic host, quote, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men, end quote. Concord, New Hampshire. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you. 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 Thank you.